Hi, welcome back. I'm going to break down three new-ish foundation stick launches. I feel like foundation sticks are just going wild right now. They're dropping everywhere. And um, honestly, I haven't bought a ton of foundations this year. I've really been trying to use up my previous ones from last year and kind of declutter. But when I was browsing the Sephora page, I just was like, okay, every single foundation on here is a foundation stick. And a couple of these I was wanting to get my hands on when they released. And some of them sold out pretty quickly. So that's why I'm saying new-ish. Some of these have been out a couple months. Um, one of them is brand new. And that is the Charlotte Tilbury. You know I had to do it. It's the Charlotte Tilbury Unreal Skin Sheer Glow Tint Foundation Stick. I cannot wait to talk about this one. I We're, we're going to dive deep. Um, but the other two are from Anastasia and Ilya. So we have the Anastasia Beauty Balm which is what I'm currently wearing on my skin right now. And then we also have the um, Skin Rewind Complexion Stick from Ilia. So if you've been interested in any three of these foundations, I'm gonna break them down for you in my experience in using them for the past couple weeks. So let's go ahead and jump into it. Where to start is the question. And I think what I'm going to do is go with the easiest and the one that I am most anxious to talk about, I guess. I don't know. Um, and it is the Charlotte Tilbury Unreal Skin Sheer Glow Tint Hydrating Foundation Stick. So when I saw Charlotte Tilbury post the preview for this, it was on one of their amazing models, of course. And when I saw it go on, I was like, okay, can someone please tell me how this is different from Hollywood Flawless Skin? Because all I saw was intense glow. Like, hyper hyper intense glow on this model um and and we all know you know as i'm getting into my 30s i'm neither a super matte girl but i'm also not a really glowy girl i'm somewhere in between i want a nice medium so i was really hesitant to even pick this up because i was like it looks like a lot of glow um but i did and here we are so let's jump into it i got the shade three fair um, I feel like the shade range is super similar to the Hollywood Flawless Filter. I'm pretty sure I wore two or three in the Hollywood Flawless Filter. So this is, um, you know, I've got a little bit of a tan, like this is a tan for me right now. This is a really good match. Um, and I'll, I'll just kind of jump into this. I feel like I could talk about this and give you a rundown in probably 60 seconds, but I will break it down a little further than that. Um, this to me is Hollywood Flawless Filter in stick form. I am a little baffled that this is even called a foundation. Um, you will see in my demo that I, personally, I just don't think it gives any coverage at all. It's this weird, just high, it, the glow is what the distraction is. So I think when people see the glow, they're gonna be like really enamored by it. But if you really look at the skin, it's not providing a ton of coverage, which I get it, it's a skin tint, well, it's called glow tint, but then they call it a foundation stick. So if you're going to slap foundation on it, we need a little bit of coverage. And I have just found that I cannot wear this by itself. It is literally like wearing Hollywood Flawless filter by itself, which I know some people really like to do. I just don't. So by itself with absolutely nothing else with it, it just looks like a high shine I don't even want to say tint. It's very interesting. It's just like this high shine layer on the skin. Now, I have found a way that I do actually like to wear this and it's pretty much the same way that I would have worn the Hollywood Flawless Filter. I actually always liked Hollywood Flawless Filter on top of my makeup. With this, what I've found is it looks so lovely underneath an actual foundation or a concealer. One day I wore this by itself and then just went in and spot concealed with concealers. Looked beautiful, gorgeous, immaculate. Um, even a couple of my foundations that I think are a little bit too flat or matte, I wore this underneath and it really helped revive them. So to me, this is more of like an enhancement product for the skin, um, a glorified <laughs> highlighter stick, if you will. Basically to me, I like this as an additional product accompanying a concealer or foundation. I just, in, in terms of longevity, I don't even see a point in talking about longevity because 
it looks the same throughout the day, but it's not like there's a ton of coverage there. It's it's just like that glow really remains on the skin. Um, really quickly, other things to note, I do really like the way this feels on the skin. It's very nourishing, it feels very hydrating, but it's not sticky or balmy. So I think most skin types would probably enjoy this. Um, however, just know, just know, if you're familiar with Hollywood Flawless Filter, this is exactly, it looks exactly the same on the skin. Um, probably just dare I say in a little bit more of a user-friendly form. So um, she is a glorified Hollywood Falls filter in my opinion. I would not call this a foundation. Sure, I will let you get away with tint, Charlotte, uh, but I think that's as far as I would take it. Let's move on to what I currently have on my skin right now, which is the Anastasia Beauty Balm. Now this is one that came out, I think before both of these, this one and the Ilia one may have came out around the same time. And I do remember wanting to try this, but most of the shades sold out very quickly. This had a uh, very fast viral moment where people were just eating this up. Um, and so I just waited my turn. I was like, you know what? We'll just wait till my shade comes back in. And sure enough, it did. So I have to say kudos to Anastasia because I have not owned an Anastasia product in quite some time. So I think it was really smart of them to roll out a complexion product, especially in this trendy form. Everything is in stick form. This, I, I have to say, I love the packaging. It just looks like a little deodorant. It's very travel friendly, um, very user friendly. So I will go ahead and say that right off the bat. The description on this is sheer to light coverage and it's also supposed to be infused with a serum or it's a serum, um, serum boosted skin tint for sheer to light coverage, delivering a natural finish with eight skin loving ingredients, which um, I'm normally not big on reading what those are. Honestly, I don't care as long as long as it looks good on me, baby. You know what I mean? Um, so it has something called uh, microspheres. Oh, oh hyaluronic acid. HA, HA, HA plus. We're gonna say hyaluronic acid, microspheres, peptide complex, and fatty acids. So um, I just bought this because I heard it looked really good. And I have to be honest with you, uh, before we jump into things, I'll go ahead and tell you the shade I got, which is number five. It's a pretty good match for me. I would say pretty solid right now. So if you find that you are similar um, skin tone to me, five, I would say, a pretty decent match. Where do I want to start with this? This was a product, one of those products where when you put it on, it's kind of hard to hate. Uh, when I put this on for the first time, I was like, okay, it's she feels creamy. I love that. I love that in a stick formula, something that's not too drying. Immediately, I could tell that it wasn't going to provide a ton of coverage, but I would say you could get at least a light coverage with this. The description says sheer delight. I would definitely agree with that. You can build it up a little bit to a light coverage. You will see in the demo, I have a couple of red spots that this could not conceal. So if I am having a rough skin day, I do have to go in with a little additional support from like a concealer. But um, overall, the way that it looks on my skin, I really do enjoy. It is very balmy. So when you put it on, and, and this is in speaking in terms of having dry skin, it feels really nice on my skin, but I can see where that balm texture, and you can see there is like a natural glow coming off of this in the demo. Um, I can see some people not really loving that. It just kind of depends on what you like and your textures, especially when it comes to a stick product. But I do find this to be very balmy, very moisturizing. Emollient would be the word for this. So it literally does like melt on the skin. I have found that this wears really nicely throughout the day. And I think that comes uh, or that plays into, you know, this not having a ton of pigment in it, but more so the skincare. So you kind of just notice that it looks really natural throughout the day. Um, honestly, I haven't noticed a ton of fading with this. I will say I've been wearing it with a new hourglass powder, which I don't have here at my office right now because I am literally like powder poor back at my house. I, I didn't have any setting powder. I was like, okay, I, my project Pam must have been hitting hard because I realized one day I dropped my Charlotte Tilbury, what was left of it. And I realized that was the only powder that I had. So when I placed this order, I also ordered the, the new Hourglass Airbrush, I think is what it's called, um, powder. Banging, chef's kiss. I wish I had it here to talk about, um, but that'll be for another time, 
another day. Um, it looks, that's what I've been wearing with this and it looks really, really good. Like it holds up really well. So I'm sure the powder has something to do with that. Um, but overall, I think it has a nice wear time throughout the day and looks really lovely. It doesn't look spotty or dry or crepey by the end of the day once it's faded. So overall, I would find this formula very hard to hate, um, especially with its user friendliness, just the way that it comes off supernatural on the skin. The only skin category I might be wary of is um, oily. Like if you have extremely oily skin, you may not love that balmy texture. And I could see where this might slip off a little bit quicker on the skin. So that's really the only group I would caution. I feel like combination, dry, mature, um, could fare well with this. Like I don't see any reason why you wouldn't be able to adjust to your preferences. So I really have to say what's to hate on this. That's kind of how I would review this. It is, it's very lovely for the summertime, very lightweight. And I can definitely see why it had a viral moment. Um, it's just, it, it's a good solid skin tint. I would say um, lives up to the coverage, lives up to the, you know, fresh face feel and look. Longevity, I don't think it really has any longevity claims, but I have found that it lasts really well on my skin. And so those are really all the things that I'm looking for. Uh, I can imagine that even if you had like scarring because this doesn't have a ton of pigment in it, I don't feel like it would seep down or, you know, get into crevices. So I just feel like all around, kudos, kudos to Anastasia on this formula. I'm liking it. All right, so next up we have Miss Ilya here. This is the Skin Rewind Complexion Stick. Now this is an actual foundation stick that's supposed to have medium coverage. It's also, um, it also has a very heavy blurring claim to it. So it says it's a long wear skincare powered complexion stick that blurs and instantly and visibly firms the skin. Well, um, I have some thoughts on that. This is going to be um, probably my most, I'm probably going to have the most to say about this one. So um, let's start out with shade. As always, I got 9N Tupelo. Again, really lovely match. Um, I, I was kind of questioning where I would be at in this shade range. And 9N is a um, solid match for me about in that light medium category. So this um, has ceramides in it something called winged kelp extract like these brands they just come up with something new every day um which is supposed to help restore luminosity to the skin um and butterfly lavender extract so i so i know some people don't love lavender and you know what maybe there's like a hint in here but, but Ilya is always so funky with the smells like you guys know the Ilya Serum Foundation. I could not do. I could not do it. The especially the original scent because I swear they went back and changed it to be a little less offensive. Um, I could not do it. So they have very earthy scents as it is, but I I'm I'm not picking up like a heavy lavender scent is where I was going with that. So this the description says buildable natural matte formula, which I did not read when I purchased this. I thought this was like glowy natural finish. I can confirm this is a matte finish um, that says it melts in and moves with you and is seamless for up to 12 hours. So I want to talk about my first experience using this. Um, the first day that I wore this, I just like totally went in at the end of the day. Um, it, I realized I hadn't put makeup on. I was just here at the office and I didn't really have any skincare prep on. I had put my, you know, moisturizer, all that on in the morning. It was probably like 3 PM by the time I got this on my face, the first time I used it. Um, no, 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 honey. <laughs> Especially if you have dry skin, because if we remember she is a natural matte finish, which I was not aware of. I, I did not read. I just purchased based on the viral claims, you know? Um, and as soon as I put it on my skin, I was like, oh my God. Like I, it was very hard to blend out because I just didn't have anything underneath to help work into the skin. And I don't have a ton of natural oils that are breaking through to help kind of, you know, make this more creamy, essentially. It was, oh, I, I was prepared to like throw her in the trash, but I was like, nope, nope, nope. We're gonna, we're gonna try this some more. We are going to work this out and see what we can do. Second day that I wore this, I put 
um, my M Beauty Project Extreme Cream on underneath, which I love. That is a very high intensity, glowy moisturizer. It looked a lot better. Definitely melted in the skin better. Uh, definitely felt more creamy, but also that's because it is mixing with the natural emollients of the moisturizer that I have underneath. So um, the second day that I wore it, I was more pleased with how it looked on the skin. I will say the longevity on this is good. Like most, in my opinion, matte foundations are good, like in terms of longevity. They just don't have the extra emollients and moisture breaking them down. So I kind of knew when I tried this on the first time, it had a lot of grip to it that it was gonna have good longevity. And I think that it does. Is it 12 hours? I, I don't really, I don't really know because I just don't wear my foundation that long. So second time wearing this, a little bit better. Um, was it clingy? Was it a little clingy to some of my dry areas around my nose, especially my eyes where I get a lot of dryness, a lot of eczema flare ups? Yes, nothing can be done about that. That is just the risk you take um when you wear a matte foundation and you have extremely dry skin third day wearing this foundation i teamed her up with the charlotte tilbury unreal skin sheer glow tint loved it and i think i included a demo of this for you guys i hope i did i've been working on this video for like a week now um but that's where i kind of or why i kind of said i like this accompanying another foundation product, another complexion product, because it can alter um, whatever you put on top of it. So with this underneath, with the added hydration that this stick offers, and also the added glow, this just like melted into my skin. Like it looked like a totally different foundation. So I will say very transformative in that regard. Whatever you are putting on underneath it, it will transform with. And I do appreciate that because some matte foundation formulas, they're matte no matter what you do. Like no matter what you put underneath, she's gonna dry down. Um, and I felt like this really transformed with that Charlotte Tilbury um, glow tint stick that I put underneath it. So, um, really enjoyed that. I will just go ahead and review this as a standalone. Let's say I don't have anything on underneath it except for a basic moisturizer or basic primer. In that case, it's not going to be for me because I am so dry. This is matte. This has high grip, which means that it will grip to those dry flaky areas on my skin if I don't have any barrier on top of it. So if I'm judging it by itself alone, it's not for me because it's just simply too matte. Um, it gives a very powdery appearance on my skin by itself. And um, I, honestly, if I'm being real, I felt like it aged me a little bit when I just wore it by itself. Now, because I feel as if it is a transformative formula, wearing something underneath it that can help elevate the look based on my skin type, which is dry, um, I like it a little bit better. Like I can work with it. Is it gonna be my first choice every single day? No. If it happened to be like the only foundation I had laying around, would it work? Yes. And, and could I make it work for my skin type? Yes. Um, I just need something to assist in that. So like a really emollient, creamy, high glow moisturizer is what I would wear underneath this. Um, the Charlotte Tilbury tint glow, Hollywood Flawless Filter, let's, we'll just say something like that, can really help, you know, offset the matte and flat and powdery tendencies that this um, stick has. Now, if you are combination oily, this might be the one. Like I could see this being a banger for people who have combination oily skin, um, simply because you already have the emollients um, coming through. You already have those natural oils breaking through. And that's what I feel like this foundation needs to get hyperrealism. It needs something to blend with it. It needs something to like unify it with the skin. Otherwise, she's a little dry. Otherwise, she is a little powdery on the skin. So um, combination oily, totally, you could wear this by itself. Like you use your regular primer, use your regular moisturizer. I think it would be totally fine. Mature, dry, even normal, even normal skin, I could see where 
um, you know, you, you kind of have to put some effort in with it. You need something down that is going to help um, melt it into the skin a bit better. I personally would not use this for mature or textured skin. Like, I don't think I would recommend this. I think the Anastasia um, Beauty Balm would be a much better option in terms of the texture and the way that it would sit on the skin. This to me just has too strong of a grip. Um, grip is so good for longevity. Unfortunately, grip can sometimes mean showing more texture. So that's why I'm saying I don't think this would be the one if you struggle with texture, eczema, dry patches. There's so many other options to go for. I don't think these are a simple yes or no. The Anastasia was a yes for me. Um, the Unreal Skin Tint Glow, I just don't see how this is practical compared to a lot of other stick options on the market right now. Um, unless you really like that high shine glow, unless you're just like a fiend for the um, Hollywood Flawless Filter, then Yes, you will love this because it is more user-friendly than Hollywood Flawless Filter. Is it foundation worthy? No, I, I don't think this looks like foundation on the skin. So um, yeah, it, it's not a really a yes or no for me. It's just uh, kind of like how you use it. Same goes for the Ilia. This to me is a yes for combo oily skin. It's a no for me for dry textured skin, um, simply because of the grip factor and the matte element. Were there days when I got this to look really good on my skin? Yes. So it's all about perspective. It's all about how you're using it. Um, and I hope with the info I provided, that, what was I trying to say? I hope with the info I provided you with that you can make an informed decision on if you might be interested in any of these three new-ish um, foundation stick formulas. Let me know if you have tried them. Let me know what your experience was, what you've been hearing, um, would love to know. I really like doing this as opposed to just doing singular, you know, product reviews. Um, so I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.